Hi there, this is Kevin Phillips, aka Kevman3D. And what I wanted to demonstrate in this video, I thought it'd be quite cool to do a, something a bit different than just showing you how to do like something like cell shading or star fields, and show you how to make sprites for uh, building your own little video games. Now, before I make these sprites, of course, I'm going to need something to create video games with. So uh, while I was trolling around the internet a while back, I came across this application, um, and it's called it's called Game Editor, and you'll find it at game-editor.com. What's cool about this application is it's a very easy, but kind of quite powerful 2D game uh, making tool, and it is open source. Uh, you can kind of give away your games, and it'll compile them for Windows and for Mac. Um, this is cross-platform, pocket PC, uh, iPad, iPod. So it's a 2D game generator. It's not so much a 3D game generator, because, you know, the, when you get into that sort of thing, you're starting into software like Unity 3D. But this is kind of free to play with. Obviously, you have to kind of pay for it if you want to sell your games. But uh, what we can do, and I'll show, give you a quick run through of it, is we can use Lightwave to generate little animated graphics that we can put into little games we make with this tool. So I'm going to go to where on Lightwave 10. Whoops. And I'm going to start by making, well, let's say uh, a spinning donut, which might be, oh, some kind of a strange spaceship for a Space Invaders game, for instance. So let's uh, go more. Let's make a, uh, a toroid. I'll make it uh, down the Z axis, and that'll be fine like that. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, perhaps, I don't know, what's an interesting looking spaceship thing? Let's make a disc. I'm going to make it just uh, looking for the top there. Okay, so something kind of looks like that. I'm not going to do anything too fancy. But maybe just uh, something that could be interesting and, and kind of animated just to give you kind of a demo of how you use this uh, sprite generating tool that comes with Lightwave 10. So it makes it a little bit more interesting. Let's uh, use a bevel tool. Go down. And maybe do something that sits right over the top there. A few bevels in here. And yeah, something kind of weird and wonderful like that. Okay, and uh, I'll give it a bit of color. I'm just going to name these things like a red. Nice, pretty red color. Oh, pink in this case. Not red, let's do that. And we'll make this uh, Q. We'll call this maybe chrome. Should be like a. Kind of a gray color. And Q, and we'll call this blue, just for the sake of giving it some kind of random, uh, some kind of a random kind of range of textures. Not a fantastic model, but uh, I'm not too fast. It's more for a demo. So I might make this a little bit bigger, and I might narrow it down by using modify, translate more, and use point normal move, which lets me uh, contract that in. Cool. Now I'm actually going to cut this, I'm going to go uh, Control X or Command X if you're on a Mac, and I'm going to put it on the other layer. Okay, so there is my funky spaceship for instance, okay, so it's, it's kind of a crap looking spaceship. So we'll take this and we'll save it, and I'll call this uh, Spaceship Gone Bad for instance. There we go, and I'll transfer it across to layout. There we go. And we're in camera view. Let's uh, change the camera. Now, if we want a, a flat on object, what we can do is we can change from a perspective camera to an orthographic camera. Okay, and obviously we need to uh, just set that to like a bounding area. So that's pretty good. That'll make a nice non perspective kind of flat on graphic if we need it. Let's make it 16 frames of animation. So I'm going to make this ring here spin right around over 16 frames just for a little bit of animation so I'm going to go frame 0 and at frame 16 I'm going to say keyframe 360 degrees so when I play this back I've got something kind of lame but uh, animated so I've got my animation so you're probably now saying okay Kev how do we export this out to put into this game making software well it's pretty straightforward what we do is we say we've got 16 frames Go to camera setup, and we you know, come in here and you can set your anti-aliasing if you want to soften that up a bit. 
um, with 8-bit games you can get away with that anti-aliasing sometimes get a nice pixel retro look so but I'll put a bit anti-aliasing on there okay I'm also going to go under render globals and this is where I tell Lightwave I want to generate a sprite that I can load up or sprite animation that I can load up in the game editor software so what I'm going to do in here is say save animation and under type there's an option here called sprite gen okay, I'm going to get animation file and I'll call it sprite renders so let's call it something like a bad spaceship and go save so what I'm going to do is I'm going to export these 16 frames of animation out as 16 individual little tiled images so I'm going to go options under sprite gen and this is how many columns across so what you can do is you can export all your images out um, by so many tiles by so many tiles now um, what it does is you say how many columns and if there's more frames than four it'll just start putting extra rows in so I'm going to go in here and say I'm going to make it what, 16 let's make it 8 so it's going to be 8 tiles across and 2 down so it's going to go across the top 1 to 8 and then 9 to 16 we're going to say tile width so I'll actually scale down this camera view to a, a kind of a sprite size that we want we'll uh, we make it 72 maybe back to what we had okay, you can also go uh, and make them odd shaped tiles I'm going to leave it lock aspect ratio so it's always 72 by 72 okay frames 1 to 100 well obviously 1 to 16 is more important and you've got a pre-multiply alpha or not okay pre-multiply alpha will just blend any anti-aliasing with the background so we'll get this kind of sort of light background we'll see a bit of dark fringing okay without pre-multiply alpha we get this kind of we'll get a hard pixely edge around it I'm gonna leave it on for now and then we click animation file so what's the file name the file name is bad spaceship so we've got that I want to also make it instead of a JPEG I want to make it a PNG 32 so I've got a bit of transparency in it so when I overlay it over maybe a, a background image I'm going to be able to see the background behind it and that's it so we go in here and we say render scene okay might as well doesn't really matter let's turn it on okay there's my frames and it's done bring up my game editor and there it is there Okay, I've got a new game here and uh, this is the game region that we have here that uh, gets set up by default I'm going to say add an actor and what an actor is is any object that's in your game in the game editor so anyway so I'm going to go in here and say add actor I'm going to add uh, bad spaceship okay so this is not all about it's not a video tutorial on using game editor to make a game but more showing you how you can use Lightwave with the game editor tool to create graphics and maybe a little bit of introduction how you can just set up stuff with the game uh, editor software so I'm going to say add and it puts this funky looking Pac-Man uh, object in here and position it somewhere in my game grid well, that'll do and then I'll right click on it and I say actor control so this is like the settings for this particular object in my game so name is bad spaceship and I need to add that animation that sprite I just generated so I click on uh, add animation and it says give me a file name and it's a uh, oh, let's see bad spaceship there we go open and there it is there playing so it's automatically kind of detected it's like eight frames across and two frames down okay you can say how many frames a second the animation plays at well I'm gonna say ooh, eight frames a second or maybe I'll make it uh, 16 frames a second like that and we say okay now that's all in place and if I click game mode which will play it this is what we have our nice little light wave render set up in our game ready to be used for uh, I don't know making the video game itself so how would you actually do something in the game I mean for instance how would I make this move in here so if I wanted to use the keyboard to go left and right um, all of this works on what we call um, events so we click on our actor go actor control and it says here events add so we click that and we say when a key is pressed down oh, sorry when a key is pressed down not up this is press the key that you want to use so I'm going to press the left arrow and you got an add action in here and here you can say what happens when the the player presses the left key and there's a whole range of options now 
one that's really handy in here, probably the most flexible one, is the script editor. And the script editor is like a little coding window, and all the code that's written in here is written in C. So you need to a little bit at C programming. There are some uh, handy little tools in here that you can pick and bring up information about different objects in the game. We've got a big list of all of the types of uh, variables and things you can read from objects. And you've got a pile of other stuff and you can load and save scripts and so forth. What I'm going to do is when we press the left mouse button, or oh, sorry, the left button on the keyboard, I'm going to say move the ship left, which is the X. So we get X equals X minus maybe 8 pixels. So it'll make the object move that way. I'll go add and say immediate action so it, it happens straight away when we press the key. And we'll go close. Then we'll add one more. We'll go key down. And this time we'll say press the right and add action. Script editor x equals x plus 8. So it goes 8 pixels that way. Immediate action and close. Let's play game mode, sorry. And we'll use the left and right arrows. And that is probably the simplest way to demonstrate uh, how you can use Lightwave and its Sprite Gen tool to generate graphics to build your own games in something like this open source program called Game Editor. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll be back uh, sometime soon in the future with a few more videos. So uh, I'll see you soon.